So today's question is what is the demon thread? This again may not be a direct interview question, but there can be different forms of interview question that is asked around demon thread. So let's take a look at what demon thread is. It is a low priority type of a thread. So this is a keyword. Try to remember this low priority, which we will when we will do a so when we will do a code demo, we are going to see why this low priority thing matters. And it runs in the background to provide support to non-demon threads. Now, what are non-demon threads? Non-demon threads are nothing but they are the user threads. In the previous videos, whenever we are trying to, you know, create a class and then we are trying to create custom thread, most of them are user threads. But if anything is running in the background, it is a low priority thread, we call it a demon thread. There are a couple of characteristics of demon thread. Okay, so this is one important thing which we have to remember. Uh, we'll do a practical uh, demo of this in the ID that the set daemon method has to be called before we invoke the start method. Otherwise, the illegal thread state exception will be uh, thrown. Okay. The next point is, okay. So first thing we understood that it is a low priority type of thread. It runs in the background and uh, it provides support to the user thread. The third thing is this will automatically terminate. This is also another key point when all other user threads have completed. This is in contrast to user thread, which will continue to run until they complete. So in, in any case, whenever we know that any program usually have a main thread, when we write system.out.println, we have a main thread that is running. After that, if we try to create a new thread, like thread t1 equal to new thread, and then we pass in the object of the runnable, or we pass an object of the uh, class, whatever, we are creating a custom thread or user threads with this. The thing is, whenever your, as long as your thread T1 is running or your other threads are running, your program will not terminate. If you have T1 and then you have a for loop, until the for loop is completed, your program will not terminate. This is the major difference between daemon thread and a user thread. So this is one interview question that what is the difference between daemon thread and a user thread? The biggest difference is this point, the third point, that daemon thread can terminate even if the other, like it can terminate after the user threads have completed the execution. The JVM will not wait for the daemon thread to complete. Unend, like abruptly it can end. Okay, this is one thing. The other kind of question can come around this point. Or the second question can be what happens when we call the set daemon method after the thread has started. So this can be another interview question on the daemon thread. So like we have said, the main difference between user thread and daemon thread is that JVM does not wait for the daemon thread before exiting while it do waits for the user thread. We'll see a code demo very soon. So this is the question which we were talking of interview question. So they can talk about what daemon threads are, what is the difference between daemon thread and user thread, why, uh, I mean, what kind of exception can be thrown or what actually happens when you call the set daemon method. Okay, how do you check if a current thread is a daemon or not? So there is another method to check is daemon, we use that method also. So many different types of questions can come uh, around the daemon thread. So now let's go to the ID and see in execution what the difference between daemon thread and user thread is, the main difference. So here is the main method. So let's try to create one user thread. So we'll use the thread class and we'll say user thread equal to new thread. And then inside this, we pass in an object of runnable. So this will create an anonymous class. So there is one shorthand way of writing. That is, we can just replace it with a lambda function. So now what will happen is you don't have to create a class and then implement a runnable interface. We have covered all of the traditional way of creating thread and all in a different video. That is what is the best way to create a thread. It is part of this playlist only. So please do check it out. So now inside this, what we are going to do is, so this internally is going to override the run method. Like we have seen, we just replaced it with a lambda. So what I'll do, I'll just use a for loop, which is going to run from 0 till 10. and Inside that, I'm just going to do one sys out and I'll just say user thread and then whatever the value of i is going to be. So, this is what it is going to run, and then I will create one more user thread. So, maybe I can call this uh, user thread one, and then I'll call just copy this and I'll just write user thread two, and I'll just do this, and then I'm going to start both the threads. So, not just Writing the lambda function, you also have to start the threads. Then I'll just call the start method. Now let's run this. So what we can see is there's an interleaving of both the threads. So both the threads are running concurrently. There is no particular execution order. But until the thread one, user thread one and user thread two have completed their execution from zero to ten. 
because both the values are now 10 until they have completed their uh, execution the program is not terminated right so now what i want to make the point i'm trying to make is the jvm will not terminate until your user threads are done now what will happen if i complete if i make this user thread a daemon thread so that is what we want to understand right so what is the difference between user thread and daemon thread so let's try to convert this to a daemon thread to do that firstly i'll change the name to a daemon thread and then i'll just call this as daemon thread right and then here what i have to do is before calling the start method so what we have seen is we have to set the status of the daemon thread like we can use this method called set daemon true which takes in a boolean value and then i can call the start method so what essentially should happen is both the methods like both the threads should go from 0 to 10 and they should also go from 0 to 10 so now let's try to run this so we can see daemon thread is 10 and user thread is 10. What I will do is to make sure to replicate that background process daemon thread is running, I'll try to include a pause in between. So I'll use a sleep method. Thread class has an inbuilt static method called sleep method. I want to make sure that the speed at which the user thread is running and the speed at which the daemon thread is running is different. The daemon thread is a little slower, takes more time to run. So what I'll do is I'll just include a try catch over here and enclose it in this so after every iteration within the for loop the daemon thread will sleep for let's say one second okay and whenever we use the sleep we have to add the catch clause also because it throws interrupted exception so this is how i have done now the daemon thread will take one one second pause in between and now everything else will remain as is now let's try to run this Okay, so what do we see that user thread has completed 10, but daemon thread only has done one execution that is zero. So for that reason, let me also try to include a sleep for the user thread because the user thread is too much fast over here. So I'll just add another try catch. And let's say the user thread is sleeping for one second and the daemon thread is sleeping for two seconds. Same thing. The logic is to make sure that daemon thread takes longer to execute. Let's run this now. Okay. So now the threads have started running. Daemon thread 0, daemon thread 1. User thread is going pretty much ahead. Daemon thread is 3, daemon thread 4. User thread has reached 9. User thread has completed running. Daemon thread is 5. What was the expectation? It has to complete from 0 to 10 like earlier it was doing but now it is not which means as long as soon as user thread has completed the execution the jvm is terminating irrespective of whether the daemon thread has completed the execution or not okay so this is what the main difference is between these two and the second question which can come is uh, what will happen if you start the thread and then you set the daemon let's see what happens we get illegal thread state exception okay because this is not allowed. You are supposed to set the daemon status first and then only you can start the thread. But let's see. Let's see what happens till the end. Is it actually behaving like a daemon thread or it is just behaving like a normal user thread only? So we see that user thread is 10 and daemon thread is also 10. Now it is not behaving like a daemon thread. Why will it behave like a daemon thread when we have set the status later on? We have started the thread. When we invoke the start method, it goes to a new state and then it goes into the run method and gets started into a runnable. So if you have already invoked the daemon thread to start, it starts as a user thread, like a normal thread only. But because you're setting the daemon status later on is why it is throwing the exception. It will throw the exception, but that is not going to start, that is not going to stop the user thread or it is not going to stop this daemon thread also. They will continue their path of execution. They do not worry about what exception is being thrown. But the point we are trying to make is whenever you want your daemon thread to behave like a daemon thread, you have to set the daemon first and then you have to invoke the start methods and run it again. Yeah, so program finished execution, user thread is completed, whereas the user thread is completed, whereas the daemon thread is not. So that's all about today's video on daemon thread and everything related to daemon thread on core Java interview question. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next video.